change your story, change your destiny. But to change your story, it requires something that is commonly very misunderstood, and that is sacrifice. Maybe I shouldn't say misunderstood. I should say half understood because there are two sides to sacrifice. The first side is that you've got something good and you give it up, right? So if you imagine you're holding a cookie in your hand and it's this amazing cookie you've worked maybe your whole life to get it, you're holding it in your hand. Sacrifice is letting it go, dropping it, and you don't want to do that. But the thing is, there's another side to sacrifice. Sacrifice isn't letting go of the cookie for the hell of it or because you're practicing some form of like, you know, self-deprivation for whatever. No, it's because opportunity is knocking on the door and it's something you've been waiting for and working for your whole life and your hand is caught in the cookie jar and you can't get to the door because you're stuck unless you let go of the cookie. That's what sacrifice is, giving up something good to get something better. And getting something better means sacrifice. 12 years ago, Gio was depressed and 70 pounds overweight. Who wouldn't want to change that story? Except that he also had this business where he had sold $200 million worth of condos. That's a cookie that might be hard to let go of. Now, I've recently made some big changes in my business and in my personal life. So I want to tell you about both. So in my business, I work with uh, coaches, consultants, expertise-based entrepreneurs like many of the people here, and I help them monetize their gifts. And I've been doing it for the last 15 years, and I've built a suite of training programs around the methodologies that I've created. And I've done fairly well. I've had the privilege of helping tens of thousands of people. We've brought in, I don't know, north of $60 million in revenue. We've got 100 people on payroll. So we've done okay. And over the last year, I've become acutely aware that as good as our trainings are, and they are great, they're still basically a polished, upgraded, refined version of something I came up with five to 10 years ago. And my thinking has shifted. My thinking has evolved. I know of ways to help people get the results they want faster and bigger than before, except I've got this audience that expects from me what I've always been delivering. I've got a hundred people whose paychecks I've got to sign. That's the cookie. Now in my personal life, I was also holding on to a cookie, a very different kind of cookie. See, I've been doing this for 15 years. 15 years ago, I was practically a kid. That was my identity. I was the youngest guy in just about every room I would walk into. And, I mean, that hasn't practically been true for a little while now, but it's still the identity that I have. Now, over the last few years, my hairline was slowly receding. It was receding in a pattern where if I'm looking straight ahead at, like, a camera for Zoom or at a mirror, it looks like it's basically all there, just a little thinner. But occasionally, I'd lean down, I'd catch a glimpse from another angler. There'd be, like, a group photo, and I'd have two thoughts. The first thought, is who is that middle-aged dork with the Steve Ballmer power donut? And the second thought was, oh crap, it's me. And I felt very uncomfortable. Now, how did I resolve both of those things? Well, it took introspection. And I believe in reasoning from first principles. And the first principle that was resonant for me here is that I think it is always better to be moving towards the best version of who you are becoming than trying to hang on to something you used to be. I'm going to say that again. It is better to move towards the best version of who you are becoming than to hang on to who you used to be. So what did I do? In my personal life, I shaved it all off. And it was recent, and it's still weird. I walk by mirrors, and my first thought is, who is that guy? And, you know, here, you know, in the bathroom, there's tons of people, whatever. At home, when it's just you, it's freaky. But I feel more like myself than I have in a while. In my business, I did the same thing. Earlier this week, I made the very drastic step of retiring my entire product catalog. 
So the catalog that brings in all the revenue, the stuff people have been looking to me for the last 10 years to make room for the even better things that are coming. And it was exhilarating and it was terrifying. And I have never felt more energized about what I am building. Now, I'm telling you this because I want to drive home. You know, you're here today listening to all these wonderful people talking about their experience and sharing their wisdom about how you can change your story to change your destiny. And I want to encourage you, take some time today, tomorrow, at some point, take some time to think about in order to go answer the door and pursue that opportunity, what do you need to let go of? Thank you. 